Ron, uh, would you mind telling us uh, exactly what took place uh, when you answered a call about a man trapped in asylum? Uh, yes, so we responded to, um, uh, to a uh, local uh, mining um, and cement industry uh, call for a man, uh, a man down, uh, some sort of industrial accident. Um, our medical uh, paramedic staff responded first. Uh, upon their arrival onto the scene, uh, they notified us that uh, there was an entrapment um, of a, a worker entrapped uh, within a silo uh, and was covered with cement. Our paramedics did an initial uh, look over of the scene and became clear that uh, the, the, uh, the patient that had become entrapped um, was not going to be a quick or easy rescue. A gentleman had entered um, a silo. Silo was approximately 30, 35 feet in diameter and 70 foot high, used to uh, store cement dust or, or cement before it's packaged and, and so forth. The worker had gone in and an access gate of approximately 18 inches across and about uh, 14 inches high uh, and went in there in, for the purposes of cleaning out uh, hardened cement uh, in, the, in the silo. Uh, my initial survey was that we could not locate the person um, from the top at all, uh, he was covered, uh, we later determined, with approximately 10 foot of cement. Um, went down to the only other access to the uh, silo, which was a small one foot by one foot opening where the, during the normal cement process, the cement was, was just uh, gravity fed out of this hole into a large screw. We could locate the patient's uh, foot. Uh, the sole of his foot, so we knew the approximate location. We didn't know if he was if he was laying down, if he was standing up. Uh, I tried to do some initial assessment on on vitals on that on that patient, but it was was extremely unsuccessful. Uh, limited access. I was able to do some sensitivity testing, uh, uh, pinching, and so forth, with with no reaction. Uh, came back outside of this this conveyor tunnel conferred with my paramedic that uh, the time, that by that time, was about 20 minutes of downtime from, from us being called. Um, as always, my responsibility to, to first is to my men, and, and from that rescue procedure, my rescuers come first. Felt it was an extremely hazardous situation. We still had uh, copious amounts of cement dust hanging or clinging to the inside of the cement silo. My concern was, was this going to come down and uh, endanger the uh, uh, ourselves and other workers made the call fairly quickly that this was no longer going to be a, a rescue it was going to be a recovery but what happened when this when this gentleman fell uh, the nature takes over human nature takes over and the next gentleman jumped right into the silo to try to start digging him out uh, I think he is he is extremely lucky that more of this cement did not come down and entrap him as well again when he went in he went in with with not even a hard hat on no gloves, no eye protection, no, no uh, uh, respiratory protection, no safety line, no safety harness. He's in there digging, and again, he was, he was, he was closed-minded or, or to, to, I have to get my, at this point, supervisor out of here and didn't realize the harm he put himself in, um, which is, and that happens. We see that all the time, uh, where people, people just don't think it's going to happen to them, and, and unfortunately, it does. The immediate concern was to get those people out. There was one and a half people, if you will. One guy was actually in the silo, another guy was in the silo to his waist. None of those people had safety harnesses on or tag lines or anything of that nature. Um, so it was very difficult, as you could imagine, to, to explain to these gentlemen that, you know, that this, this person has expired and we need to do this correctly and properly and safely you need to remove yourself from this inside of the silo. And that took a lot of time, when I say a lot of time, about five minutes, I think, to, to finally make this gentleman understand. Quite frankly, he was in tears. He was, he was very distraught. And, and, and to get him out of there, uh, it, was, it was our first paramount decision to do and to, to make sure he came out. He came out. I got the workers together, which was right outside the silo, and I, I explained to them uh, why I made the decision I made. Um, based on the hazards of the cement that was still above the opening. Um, a little anatomy of, of the silo. The silo was approximately 70 foot high, uh, about 18 feet off the bottom. There was this, this access door where this employee entered. He had fallen down to the bottom of the silo and was covered with about 10 foot of cement. 
there was cement hangings, if you will, on the walls approximately uh, 10, 12 feet above the access door. So our concern was if we go in, uh, the stability of the cement was not known at this point, um, and was this going to come down further? So we wanted to remove those, those uh, rescuers, not from our services, but from, from the uh, facility as for also the subcontractor who was hired to clean these silos. Explain to the, the members of, of his crew why and what we did, what we, why I'm doing what we're doing, and, and that's always tough because they, their immediate is to go in there uh, unsafely and, and try to rescue that person. I think that's part of human nature. Uh, I think they were extremely lucky that more of the cement did not come down and entrap them. In, in interviewing the the work employees of this firm that was uh, that was a subcontractor to this facility to clean out these silos, um, they indicated that uh, they were cleaning this particular silo. Um, the silo had already had already been blown down, which is a uh, uh, a type of uh, it's, 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 some use a steel ball with air and they swing this around the silo to blow down as much cement as they, they physically can before they go into it. The idea is there's not a lot of cement in there, it blows it down below this hatch, so when you enter the hatch, you're above the cement. They op the employees apparently opened the hatch up, took one look and said, we can't go in there. They notified their supervisor, if you will, uh, or foreman of the crew, uh, which in this case was also, as I believe to be, an owner of, of this firm, and said, we cannot go in here, the cement's you know, too much, it's above our head, we don't feel safe. The supervisor, um, realizing that, uh, you know, that this may be true, said to his employees, stay out, let me go in. Fortunately, the supervisor went into the building uh, with no safety harness on, no safety lines, either from, from, the, from the roof or from lateral, and no respiratory protection, and, that, and that's very critical if you're going to be buried in, in this type of material um, uh, as a precaution. And you shouldn't have been in that kind of confined space anyway without a respiratory protection on and a lifeline and a safety harness and some sort of two-way communication. But the supervisor made a determination that he was going to go in and inspect. He entered this silo, again, without, some sa without any safety equipment, uh, with the exception of a hard hat, um, and turned around, apparently said to one of his employees, you know, hand me a scraper or a shovel, and apparently at that time someone passed them, an employee passed him the shovel or a scraper, and with that the crusted layer of cement, or a hardened layer of cement gave way, putting him down into a void and engulfing him with the more liquid cement um, and burying him from, for about 10 feet above his head. Um, so, unfortunately, the supervisor seemed to know to, to keep his employees out, but was, was I, I want to say, close-sighted, and we all do this, unfortunately, was, was, was close-sighted or had blinders on and didn't realize what he was getting into with the adage, it never happens to me, and, and, and that's very unfortunate. It seemed to me that this person knew better, but uh, he went in and, and, and unfortunately, it cost him his life.